Hi, my name is Megan Monis, and I am an organic chemistry student here to tell you about a brand new research finding regarding a way to treat some forms of cancer like leukemia and a new, new form of chemotherapy. These research findings involve the discovery that inhibitors are used to block MCL1 proteins by fastening to their binding site. MCL1 proteins are one of the possible proteins that can be coded for with the MCL1 gene. This protein is involved in enhancing cell survival by blocking healthy apoptosis. The overabundance of these MCL1 proteins is a big factor in cancerous tumor growth. The inhibitors used to block the MCL1 proteins from binding to one another and other, and other molecules, disallowing them to bound, bind with other proteins that trigger apoptosis in a healthy cell, are providing substantial improvements within rat populations for regulating the apoptosis that normally occurs in healthy cells with MCL1 proteins. If that didn't make a whole lot of sense at first, don't worry. I'm here to break it down into some more simple parts that are definitely relatable to what we have learned so far in chemistry courses here at MSU. For example, the drug used to inhibit the MCL1 is created using a merging method. Due to the fact that the drug possesses a carboxylic acid that interacts with a single amino acid within the MCL1 protein binding site. The structure of a carboxylic acid looks like this. This carboxylic acid is essential when interacting with the MCL1 protein. This is true because of the presence of amino acids within this MCL1 protein binding site that interact through hydrogen bonding, dipole-dipole interactions, and London dispersion forces with the carboxylic acid. More specifically, the binding site on the MCL1 protein consists of nine alpha helices in, in a carboxyl terminal transmembrane region. If you are not familiar with a C terminal, they are at the ends of an amino acid chain terminated with a free carboxyl group. The structure of the binding site being SO facilitates the binding of the protein to the drug via the assistance of similar molecules, carboxylic acids, binding to one another via strong interactions, aka hydrogen bonding. Along with this, the alpha helices are the secondary structure of the amino acids in the MCL1 proteins, which interact similarly with the drug that contains carboxylic acids. An amino acid has a structure that looks like this. The ability for the carboxylic acid to hydrogen bond with the single amino acid comes from the OH bond off of a carbon on both molecules. The mechanism of hydrogen bonding derives from the lone pair on the electronegative oxygen electrostatically attracting the partially positive hydrogen that is connected to either an oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine atom. In this case, the hydrogen is bonded to an electronegative oxygen that pulls in the electrons co closer to its core, creating a partially positive charge on that hydrogen atom. The hydrogen bonding model looks like this. As you can see here, in a classic carboxylic hydrogen bonding interaction, which I'm sure you have seen before, the partially negative oxygen and partially positive hydrogen are forming tight interactions with one another. Whenever hydrogen bonds are present, so are dipole-dipole interactions and London dispersion forces. Dipole-dipole interactions occur due to the partially positive and partially negative charges on the atoms within a molecule, and this is due to difference in electronegativity. London dispersion forces are present due to the instantaneous dipole that occurs in one molecule when two neutral substances approach one another, causing an induced dipole in the next molecule over, allowing them to attract when the electrons and positive nuclei are interacting. Through each of these crucial interactions between inhibitor drug and MCL1 protein, there is a strong connection at the protein's binding site that ensures the function is inhibited and healthy apoptosis will occur more often. This interaction between the drug and the MCL1 protein allows the drug to inhibit the MCL1 from binding with itself and other molecules within a human cell. When the drug is successfully bound as an inhibitor, the MCL1 proteins will not bind with one another which is when cancerous cell growth happens in cells and they are not dying as they should be. 
Overall, the introduction of these findings due to the research are pivotal, is a pivotal moment in history and can be broken down into the simple molecule-to-molecule -molecule interactions that in turn affect functionality of different proteins. In